Welcome to the University of Ontario Institute of Technology's Climactic Wind Tunnel. Housed in the new $100 million Automotive Centre of Excellence, you're looking at one of the largest and most sophisticated wind tunnels on the planet. Capable of wind speeds over 240 km per hour, temperatures from minus 40 to plus 60 Celsius, and humidity ranging from 5 to 95%. They can even make it snow in here, or they can roast you with their solar lights. The variable wind nozzle can optimize airflow from 7 to 14 square meters, allowing for testing of vehicles of all shapes and sizes. And the turntable floor means you can rotate the test vehicle on the integrated chassis dyno and load cells for cross-wind testing. The facility is fully staffed and there to help you with data collection and analysis so that you can make the most of your time in the tunnel. Something our friend Sasha from On Point Dyno was determined to do with his Nissan 350Z race car. With the Z positioned on the load cells under each tire to measure downforce, Sasha and his crew came prepared to learn more about the forces being generated by the car's big front splitter and adjustable two-element rear wing. Plus they taped some red wool tufts on areas of interest as simple visuals on airflow over the car. The on-point crew also made sure to take a bunch of baseline measurements including wing angle and ride height so that any changes to these could be properly assessed when looking at the wind tunnel data. Now it was finally time to play Mother Nature and unleash a stream of smooth air at the Z. As we quickly learned while poring over the data in the control room, the car was making almost all its measured downforce at the rear, and this imbalance was actually getting a little bit worse as wind speeds increased. To address this imbalance, the on-point crew taped up the front bumper inlets, checked the angle of attack on the front splitter, and reduced the angle of attack on the rear wing, which was thought to be lifting the front end. The decision was also made to add some rake, so the rear tires were positioned on plywood to simulate a taller rear tire, giving the front splitter a more aggressive angle of attack. With the wind tunnel fired up again, the results of these changes were easy to see, with 22% of total downforce now being made at the front of the car. This was a big improvement, but with the rear wing angle reduced, total downforce had decreased, so it was time to make some more changes. The open cowl area was taped up and a set of canards or dive planes were added to the front bumper. plus the rear wing was set back to its original, more aggressive angle of attack. So now the car was in maximum front downforce trim. And how did these changes affect the car's front to rear downforce balance? Big improvements once again, with front downforce jumping up to about 35 to 40% depending on the wind speed. Here's Sasha's take on the whole experience. Please excuse the awful hissing audio, but as you might have guessed, that's just the nature of shooting in a wind tunnel. So bro, Dave, bro, how much downforce we make? What happened? To be honest with you, the total downforce stayed about the same. Okay. When we came in here, we had too much wing. How much was the total downforce? About 600 pounds at 220 miles an hour. And how was that spread across the car? It was about 100% rear. 100% rear when we came in? Almost. So you, you were doing we were wheelies seeing, when we got yeah, here? Yeah, no. I mean, maybe our front ride was a fair bit higher, I think, than we were running on the racetrack. Okay. And we do have to take into account the dynamic effects of braking and whatever. For sure, track. okay. But um, yeah, I mean, we've added some canards, we've added some side fences, we've lowered the front of the car, we've raised the back of the car. Yeah. And basically we've now got like a 35% front distribution, which if you think on a car that's 55-ish front, yeah. give you some stability at high speed. So I'd say 35 to 40% is probably about right. For front downforce for front down versus for a weight distribution car. kind of deal? Kind of, yes, gotcha. Here. We're also taking into account that probably at the racetrack we're going to see a bit more front as the you know, the car Nose dives and the suspension right. presses and all that good stuff. But I mean, we, the stuff we learned here, I mean, basically to take some of the wing out of the car yeah. would, you know, shift the balance to the front incredibly. So the tant cantilevering effect that we're getting right. from the wing is incredible. So one notch on the wing makes a huge difference. Really? Okay. Not just in removing or adding rear, but also removing or adding front. Right. right. I mean, this, this place is crazy. So, 
your takeaway is what? For the amount of money we spend racing, it doesn't make sense if you have a car that's got any sort of downforce to not come to a place like this. Of course, the big question is how much does it cost to wind tunnel test your race car? At Ace, the going rate is $2,000 an hour, which may sound like a lot of money, because it is, but when you realize that comparable wind tunnels typically cost three to five times this, if you can even get in the door, tunnel time at this world-class facility in Oshawa, Ontario starts to look like a relative bargain. Here's how ACE director John Komar puts it all into perspective. So we're here inside the wind tunnel with John Komar, the director of ACE. John, can you tell us a little bit about the scale of this place? It's amazing. Yeah, this, uh, this tunnel basically is like engineering 101 on steroids. It's huge. It's five stories high. It's a football field long, half a football field wide. And you can see right behind me, we've got a five meter, 18 blade fan. It'll peak up to three megawatts. That's where we get the power. Everything's gotta be big in order to duplicate what Mother Nature does. And how much wind speed can this generate? This tunnel can go, well, we, we spun her up close to uh, 270 kilometers an hour, but we can track with the wheels 250 kilometers an hour. Wow, okay. And the, the low end of that speed, I mean, you go from slow yeah, to Yeah, that's, that's a rip. That is a really neat thing. Our tunnel as well is we've developed low speed as well. We can go down to like three kilometers per hour, which is very important when you're doing development actually in terms of idling a vehicle. So not only are we looking at going really fast, we don't want things to heat up when they're stuck in traffic. Yeah. For guys like us, it's pretty amazing that you're making this facility accessible. And, and it's also amazingly affordable. I mean. Yeah, you know, you can come in here for a very short time. You're going to blow through, say, in motorsports, you're going to blow through thousands of dollars worth of tires in a weekend. But for a fraction of that price, you might be able to pull a second and a half off here. By tuning your... Yeah, by tuning your vehicle. And, and, and the neat thing about it is it's relative. You bring your vehicle in. It's the track-ready vehicle, ready to do it. It's exactly... You can come right out of this facility and drive right to the track. No modifications. We're actually looking at the car relative. Not just pure aerodynamics, we're looking at the way you actually run the car. As it sits on the road. As it sits on the road, springs, tires, everything. It, it's, it's basically tuning your car. That's what we love to do here at Speed Academy. So thank you, John, so much for the tour. Yeah. We really appreciate it. No problem. And I get the feeling we're probably going to be back. I certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right.